I was disappointed that even the Christian world had to get in on the slamming. And I often read, and I know you do too, Eric, because we read a lot of the same news sources, a Christian post. And they had a couple of stories on, on this same topic and the headline, New Christian Zionists Seek to Distance from Wild, Crazy, Popular Apocalypticism. And they go on to say, and I'm just reading a few lines from these articles, folks. They're long articles, just excoriating people who believe like those of us do in this ministry and that the positions that Michelle Bachman put forth again on this program for two programs back in April. But this Christian Post goes on to say, a group of Christian scholars representing a new Christian Zionism seek to distance their views from the wild, crazy, popular apocalypticism with which Christian Zionists have often been associated. Goes on to say, 11 speakers, mostly theologians, presented at the April 17th conference, People of the Land, a 21st century case for Christian Zionism hosted by the Institute on Religion and Democracy. And then it winds up saying, this apocalypticism was also on display recently when former Congresswoman and presidential candidate Michelle Bachman said on a radio program, Understanding the Times, that the end times were near and associated that prediction with Barack Obama's foreign policy. Well, again, and that's coming from the Christian right, so even they are jumping on the bandwagon of of the bashing campaign, msn.com, Obama's poor relationship with Israel will bring the return of Jesus. That was their headline, the ever-ready right-wing watch. End times are here, thanks, Obama. Huffington Post, the rapture is coming, and it's Obama's fault. And gentlemen, the thing I thought of is God will use any old donkey to get this kind of a message out. He'll use any vehicle to get the important message out that the king is coming, our are you ready? Are you looking up? Are you longing for his return is the ultimate message of the king is coming. You know, I said a minute ago, Jan, that we expect this kind of thing from the left-wing media and the pundits who want to use this as a tool just to bash Christians in general. What they really want to do is divide Christians as much as anything. But shame on whoever the author was, and I don't have that article right in front of me. If it was he or she, I would say their name if I had it here. Shame on the person who wrote that in Christian Post. This is not apocalyptic. This is right from the scriptures. And all we're doing is examining the scriptures as the Bereans were, of course, very good at. And that's how we use that term Berean about someone who studies the scriptures to find out what God is saying. All we're saying is look at the signs around us. Look in the Bible. Something is going on. That's all we can do is commentate about those things and let the scriptures lead us every week. It is the people inside the church that really concerns me. And Jan, you and I have heard Dr. Dave Reagan, our friend, Mm -hmm. uh, make the statement that he got up to preach one Sunday morning and told people to turn open the, the Bible to uh, the book of Daniel. And the pastor stood up in the front row and said, Dr. Reagan, we don't use that book in this church. And Dr. Reagan's response is, well, we do this morning. <laughs> you can just hear him saying it. And he went ahead and preached from Daniel that morning. But that's just a, an example. Mm-hmm. There are churches all over the place who won't read anything from Revelation, from Daniel, Ezekiel, etc. That's right. I think the greater question probably is this. Is serious persecution of Bible believers coming to America? Now, many would say it's already here because because we know there are Christian businesses being shut down because the intolerant, tolerant crowd is closing down bakeries, flower shops, etc. I saw the headline recently in the Christian Post. Might have been an editorial. Uh, Dear Churches in America, prepare to be treated like first century Christians in Rome, and the United States Supreme Court may soon liberate the biblically conservative church from old prejudices that should have long ago jettisoned, forcing it into rightly bowing to the enlightenments of modern modernity, in the words of the recent New York Times. And then again, homosexuality must be removed from the sin list. And according to MSNBC commentator, traditional marriage proponents must be forced to do things they don't want to do. It goes on, sadly, this crusade will be like the Marxist liberation movements that promised to free people, but really were about control and suppression. And Eric, you and I were talking here recently about what Hillary Clinton said here just a few weeks ago. In a sense, what she wants to do with religious people in America. April 23rd on Thursday of that week, women in the World Summit in New York City, this is what Hillary Clinton said, I have the quote here, far too many women are denied access to reproductive health care and safe childbirth and laws don't count for much if they're not enforced. Rights have to exist in practice, not just on paper. Now listen to this folks, laws have to be backed up with resources and political will and deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. What 
what she's saying is, forget what the Bible says. You've mm-hmm. got to listen to us and follow what we say, or you know, we're going to do something, whatever that might be, a rest. I mean, I'm not sure what exactly what she's thinking. We know that's coming, but that's like you know a foreshadowing of what Antichrist is going to do right there. Mm. I'm not calling her Antichrist. I just want the Daily Coast to know that. But I am <laughs> saying that that's a foreshadowing because that's the same kind of thing that we understand from the scriptures is going to happen in the very end of the end days that we're leading up to. Well, we have heard so many commentators, including Jan Markell herself, that have said that America is ripe for judgment. And we have been beginning to look at the 2016 election and saying, you know, if the wrong people get in office again, it may be much worse than their current administration. And really, the judgment of God will come through the leaders that we as Americans will elect in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, I agree, Larry, completely. Here's what I hear from those emailing this ministry. Of course, I hear lots of things, but a, a theme over and over and over again is I want to hear in my church, I want to hear the things that your program, Understanding the Times Radio, with your host, Jan, Eric, Jill, Larry, all of you, I want to hear what you folks are talking about, frequently anyway, in my church. I want to hear that the King is coming. I want to hear that we have a glorious future, a glorious eternity that is prepared for us. I want to hear that we're going to live forever on streets of gold. We hear none of this in my church. I just had an email minutes ago saying the same thing. She pleaded with him to talk about these things. He just said to her, you know what? We don't and won't talk about these things. And then he gave her some of the reasons. So I think, gentlemen, when we come forth with a couple of programs, as we did back in mid-April with the former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, and we were simply talking about the times as they are today and how they are preparing the way for the fact that the king is coming sooner rather than later. This ultimately was a very uplifting two programs. However, the secular and in a couple of cases, the Christian and certainly the Christian Post twisted it and made it a mockery. But again, Eric, as you said so appropriately, that is Second Peter 3 jumping out at us. It really is, you know. And why are they doing this? Well, there's lots of reasons, but I believe the undertow of the whole thing is us talking about these things is going to spoil their party. They don't want anybody True. to rain on their parade. True. And they certainly don't want to hear about sin and about judgment and about repentance and all the things that uh, we speak about. They don't want to hear about that. So it's no wonder this is going on. But folks, you know, when we get our theologies from politicians who regularly espouse these anti-biblical thoughts and practices, it is us who are in error if we listen to them. I think we should also encourage our audience, Jan and Eric, to go back and listen to those two weeks that we did with Michelle Bachman, because I was on behind the controls Mm -hmm. when she was in studio, and I was so excited. I wanted to shout hallelujah, because she ended both of those programs with such a powerful admonition to the churches and the preachers to get a fire in their belly to preach Christ and to preach Him coming again and salvation. It was powerful. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining. We we just wanted to have a short response to our critics here because, again, in the last few weeks, it's been all over from, again, the Minneapolis paper to many, many websites on the Internet to, again, right up to the President of the United States coming against some folks here, myself, Michelle Bachman, Eric, and others who are trying to get excited about the fact that the king is coming. And he is, no matter how many people want to mock and scoff God doesn't care. Jesus is coming again sooner rather than later. I guarantee it. The Bible says it. That's good enough for me. That's